Hi everyone, I've got a scoop for you today. Did you know that last year, in the US only, website publishers lost $8 billion? Some would say it's the scam of the century. And what's quite surprising is that it was not a human op operation, it was done by bots. So, I mean, we, we're going to talk a lot about bots. So what do we call a bot? A bot, it's a computer program that uses the internet from website to website. And in that case, clicks on ad banners, fake impressions, and costing the publishers $8 billion. But that's not all. Some of those bots are called hackers, and they come looking for security breaches in a website. They have two objectives. The first one is to bring the website down, to stop it working. The second one is to try and steal personal data from website users. Other bots are called web scrappers, and they come looking for content. They come on a website to steal data, to steal content, and make money out of it. And some of those web scrappers are actually created and run by big data companies, and we, we will give you a few examples. And they make money out of the content that they get from the website, selling it to their end clients. A third sort of problem that is caused by automated requests is slowing down your website because they use requests instead of your legitimate users who are human beings and sometimes they even they may even bring down your website this is called the denial of service attack and on the web it is critical to make sure that your human visitors have the fastest possible experience on the web response time is money it has been measured by major players on the internet such as Amazon Google and others that if you get one, a, page, a web page one second slower, this will drive your revenue down by 7 to 10%. This will drive your visits by 11%, which is even more, and your customer satisfaction by 16%. This means that on top of not purchasing, they will even not go back. So that's why it's critical to make sure that robots and other causes of congestion don't slow your website and don't prevent your, your legitimate users from accessing your website. And this is anything but anecdotic. We've measured that on any given website, 50% of the traffic actually comes from bots. That means that one visitor, well, well, each other visitor is actually not a human being. And that has a huge impact, obviously. And on the 50 remaining percent who are actual humans and potential customers, usually you will see that 20% out of them only make 80% of revenue. So overall, only 20% of half of your traffic is important to you. The others are either human beings whom you want to serve, but not as fast as the others, or robots whom you may want to filter or to accept. This is seen on this graph. So you have on the left the human beings with those 20% and 80% uh, repartition, and on the right, the bots. And as you can see here, so I've told you that 50% of any given website's traffic is actually generated by bots, but not all bots are actually bad bots. Half of them are actually good bots. They are, you know, the social networks, search engines, you know, Google, Yahoo, that kind of companies, and they need to be allowed through. But as you see here, a big chunk are actually bad bots, and they have three objectives. The first one is to come on the website and try to uh, intrude into database or to take over user accounts. Or they're coming for the content, to scrape the content and sell it off on their side. And for a smaller part, the 5% that you see here, we call them commercial bots. And for they, in that case, we're actually able to identify big data companies that come on a website to get data, to get content, and provide solutions to their own clients. So for this reason, because not all visitors to your website are equal, you, you need to do some sort of classification beforehand. You need to be able to decide what sort of visitors is coming? Is it a human? Is it a bot? What sort of human? What sort of bot? This is the problem that we are solving. But we are not solving it through uh, old school uh, solutions such as using bases of signatures as antivirus vendors would do, for instance. Because that will be uh, a whack-a-mole uh, play where we need to run after uh, 
the evolving market of robots and uh, on for humans especially it's uh, useless to try to predict universally what makes a VIP uh, visitor because it depends on the website so that's why we use big data and machine learning in order to, to, to achieve that and by profiling visitors of the website telling about r humans and robots, what sort of robot, what sort of human, we can give them a different route in the website. We can have a, dif a differentiated uh, behavior for, uh, for the, those users in terms of performance, or in terms of filtering and others. For instance, this can be summarized by this uh, 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 schematic where we receive anonymi anonymous uh, visits because at the beginning we have no idea who the visitor is, even if it's a robot or not. We can classify them and based on this classification, we can give them a different behavior such as accelerating them which is the upper route for VIP customers, humans and important bots we can even filter out the visitors that are not interesting, for instance, bad bots or denial of service attacks. This way, the, the, your most important customers get the most uh, uh, accelerated experience and they, more, they are more likely to purchase. So as a preliminary uh, uh, conclusion, this has implications and usage in cybersecurity, making sure that you have the control of who visits your website, helps you protect your website, your infrastructure, and the data that is within your website. So now, let's dive into concrete examples. Let's see how we can have a different processing depending on who the visitor is. First, let's start with humans. Humans can be seen as VIPs, important customers, or not so important customers. What sort of differentiated behavior can we have? We can accelerate them, we can prioritize them, but we can do even smarter things. For instance, it has been seen in the online travel industry that just by inverting the search criteria of a results page by sorting from most expensive to less expensive instead of the opposite for VIPs, customers who have a, a high revenue, you could increase the expectation of revenue, the average uh, um, income, by 15%. So one simple thing that, I, that is no so impacting can drive your revenue up by 15% alone. And I'm going to give you a few uh, ex bot examples, really, to let you know what I was talking about. The first one is an easy one. That's Google Bot. You all know Google Bot. You all know that uh, Google scans the web in real time to make sure that content and pages are uh, properly referenced on their search engine. And you might think that it's easy to spot Google Bot on a website, because usually, and it is, it's true, usually they come on the website and say, hey, I'm Google, please let me through. The tricky part is that most bad bots do exactly the same. They come on the website and say, hey, I'm Google, please let me through. So it takes a bit of engineering and a bit of machine learning and artificial intelligence to understand if a bot actually comes from the official Google, uh, Google corporation or if it's a bad bot. And obviously, it's really important not to block Google. We can't be mistaken in that case, because if you block Google, your content is not referenced anymore, and you lose visitors, money, and many things. So what do IBM, Salesforce, and Cision have in common? For us, anyway, they're all big data companies. What they have in common, that's what I was talking about earlier, they all scan websites. Big data companies, they might be into media monitoring. That's the case for Cision. They might be into marketing tools. That's the case for Salesforce. They might be into business intelligence. That's the case for IBM. They have a, their, their business is completely, completely legitimate. But in order to carry out their business, they have to crawl a website which costs resources to the website owner. So our goal is to detect them in real time and to redirect them to an API so that they can continue doing their business while not scraping the website. And in terms of bad bots, it's really complicated to select a bad bot example. There are just so many. So I'm just going to um, talk to you about a use case. Now, imagine you have a BetClick account or a BWIN account, and you also have a LinkedIn account. And you've all heard about um, database leakage in the past few months for LinkedIn or Netflix, for instance. 
And imagine that you use the same email address, which you have a right to, both on LinkedIn and on BetClick. What's going to happen when they have a, a leakage on LinkedIn, what's going to happen is that bots that we call impersonators, they are going to come and try combinations of logging and passwords that they have stolen from another website to try to take over your account and try to use your credits. It's a massive issue for uh, online betting companies. Going back to robots and automated requests, uh, a typical use case is protection against this denial of service attacks. Uh, I suppose you know what this is, but to be simple, this is when a, a competitor or whoever wants you harm will overload your website with requests in order to bring it down or at least make it so slow that your legitimate users cannot access it. This is an actual problem. It happens tens of, day, of times every day, and it happens even for very, very big players. Because it is so easy to currently to uh, hire a, a hacker in order to attack your site, and it will be so cheap that the income, the revenue that will be driven just by uh, attacking you is very interesting. So how we can we help? How can big data and machine learning help? By uh, the ability to recognizing to uh, the automated request, the bots, and filter them out, we can just let legitimate users get in so that your website is still accessible and works perfectly fine, and the, eff the effect of the attack is just nulled out. So that's a great, be a great benefit. So you've understood, it's time to take back uh, control. I mean, our job is to do all the machine learning, artificial intelligence part to you know, spot the bad guys from the good guys and give access to our customers, give, give them an access to a dashboard through which they will be able to block the traffic that they don't want to see in their traffic anymore. And to conclude, uh, we just highlighted a few key benefits. Really, the first one, the most obvious one, is enhanced security for your website and your visitors. We are going to block, to block sorry, all the bad bots before they can access your application, before they can access your website. That's a hands-off protection from known and new bots alike. As I said, it's our job to do all the machine learning and artificial intelligence parts. You get control back over your content. You no longer have cases where your content is scraped and used without authorization or copyright. It's fully integrated with your analytics because business decisions have been made over the past 10 years on analytics that take into account bot traffic, which means that business decisions have been made on traffic behavior that was actually coming from bots, not human beings. And it boosts lead generation, obviously, because we identify all the companies that might be interested in your content, and we give you the opportunity to get in touch with them and see how you could create new lines of revenue. And finally, for the human visitors, having the ability to recognize who are the important visitors for your website and give them an adapted experience instead of speed of priority and targeted uh, contents, you can increase your customer satisfaction, increase your uh, sales revenue, and your overall brand reputation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any questions for Data Domain Culmineo? No? OK, I, I do have a few questions. Uh, isn't it too intrusive when you, and what do you do with the data? Is it uh, yes, that's, that's a very good question because uh, big data uh, can be seen as something evil because it tracks you and it stores data about you. Uh, it is actually possible, not going into technical details, it's actually po possible to do what we have described, that is pro profiling and classification on anonymous data. Therefore, just by observing the behavior of the users towards the website and the behavior of the website towards the user, we can create a classification model that helps recognizing who the visitor is, even not looking at personal data from this user and not storing any. So actually, doing what we have described does not create any liability regarding personal data. And last question before the end. How do you avoid the false positive? And maybe for the audience, what is false, pos false positive? Well, a question we usually get is how do you make sure that you don't actually block a human being? 
And um, to prevent that case from, happen from happening, what we do, we never fully block a request. We always show a CAPTCHA page. So most of you might know what a CAPTCHA is. It's you know, those pages that you have to click and say, right, I'm not a robot, I can go through. And this allows us to make sure that we can't block human beings. And we can monitor really, really closely the number of CAPTCHA that are actually passed versus the number of CAPTCHA that are shown. And we have an average of 0.001% of the CAPTCHA pages that are actually, that are actually passed. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Benjamin and Christophe. So if you want to see them, they're around all day long.